This tutorial is brought to you by our patrons. One issue I've had with making more and more complex projects with Godot is handling input, having different parts of the game try to listen to and to consume input. So one bug that popped again and again in the ARPG demo is this one. I open the shop menu and it just won't open or I remove that one line of code and then the shop opens as you'd expect. But now the character is moving as I'm moving inside of the shop because I want that transparent menu in the game. So one simple solution would be to move the menus to a different scene and completely switch to it. But I don't want to constrain the design. Instead, I wanted to fix that input handling issue. And it turns out that Godot has a pretty advanced system when it comes to consuming and propagating input events. That's what we're going to talk about now. Okay, so before we look at the various callback functions you can use to receive the input and talk about the flow of input, we're going to see how to trim down on the inputs that you receive tremendously with two methods. The first one is to deactivate input processing on a given node. In a game with growing complexity, you may have characters that are like these that have lots of nodes inside of them, especially if you're using the state pattern like we have here. When you are making such a complex scene, you want one entry point for your input most of the time. So you have one character and the character is going to receive input in one place that's going to propagate them manually. In my case, it's the state machine node here. I'm going to open its script and you have an unhandled input method. So I don't want to use the input callback, which is called first by Godot. I want to use unhandled input, which is called last. So this gives the interface the opportunity to receive the input event before the character receives it. So if there's a menu open, the interface can consume it before the character. You can stop the input processing here. And the way you do that is by calling the method set process, and then you have to choose between input, if you are working with the input callback, or in our case, we want to use set process and handled input, and you pass it a Boolean value, false to deactivate the input on the player. One way you can use that is from the game, if you receive a given signal, I'm gonna go back to the demo. For example, I go through the shop menu and upon closing the shop, I can connect that to the player and I could deactivate the input on the state machine through that. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to create a new on shop menu closed callback here. I'm going to expand the script editor and move on to this. And so in this function, I can set my state machine on the player. So I'm going to grab the state machine node. I'm going to set it to not process unhandled input. So that's one way you can do that. But uh, over time, this can make your scripts a little verbose. So if you have a way to prevent the game world from getting all the input, it's even better, right? If you can do that for many nodes at the same time, instead of doing that specifically for the player and for various other elements that might receive input. Thankfully, there's a way to do that using parse. When you select any node in Godot, if you go down to the node category in the inspector, you will see a pose mode. By default, it's going to inherit from the parent. All the nodes in the tree, when you pause the game, are going to be parsed like their parent. But you can override that and make it so, for example, the interface in your game keeps processing during the pause. So that's what I'm using often for menus and all that stuff to have them all run in the same scene. And from my game node up there, I have some code at the bottom. If I go down to the two callbacks, when you open the shop menu and when you close it, this toggles the pause state in the game. Now, if I go down to the player's pause mode, it's going to inherit from its parent so when I play the game and I go on the shop and I open the shop with the space bar, it's going to pause the game now. 
I can use that to pause the character so you can see that as I am pressing the arrow keys, the character is not moving and because the entire game world is paused. The reason I'm showing you these two methods, setting the game to pause or setting input to not process on a specific node, is that you may want sometimes to have the player stop when you open the menu, but the game keep playing. In a game like Dark Souls or some more hardcore action RPGs, when you open the menu, you can't control the character, but the monsters can still attack you. In that case, you can't pause the entire game. You'll want to set process input to false on your character. 